Hi, Andy here for Rancher Government. Today we're going to start kind of a new video series highlighting some of the features about our complete stack, some of the features about how to integrate, some implementation tips, things like that. Really short videos just to kind of keep you uh, kind of interested in some of the different products and see how they work together. Today we're going to start on Rancher and Harvester integration. Okay, as you can see here, I've got Rancher deployed in the cloud. I've got it running in DigitalOcean. I have a downstream Amazon cluster, and I've got my local cluster. I'm going to go over here to my virtualization management. Now, I've already added my Harvester node here in my house, and it happens to be an MSO1 from Minusforms. Really nice little box. Got it embedded, not embedded. It's got a discrete GPU in it, and we can go take a look at virtual machines. You can see I've been playing with Olama and Llama. Uh, I have a video on that on my other channel. Okay, what we're going to do, though, and by the way, uh, from Rancher, we can go ahead and lo lo look at the virtualization service. We can manage it from a single pane of glass. That's really cool. But what we're going to do is now we're going to go under the cluster manager and we can see that we've got, uh, like I said, we've got the AWS downstream. We have our local. We're going to go ahead and cre create. We're going to create a downstream single VM just for speed uh, cluster on our harvester infrastructure provider. But what you can see is that we can actually talk to a lot of different other infrastructure providers. This is a really easy way, really great way to manage not only applications, but cluster lifecycle. Oh, great. Let's go ahead and look at, let's go ahead and create the Harvester one. So we're going to MSO1 because it's on my MSO1. And I'm going to do one pool. I'm going to give it eight cores and I'm going to give it 16 gigs of RAM. I'm going to use the default namespace. I'm going to use the Rocky user only because I know I'm going to be deploying with the Rocky 9.4. Give it 80 gigs of disk. I'm going to use VLAN 1. And by the way, notice all this information is getting picked up by Harvester. If you're in an AWS environment, you have those options. If you're in DigitalOcean, you have those options. Okay. Here, underneath the cluster config, I can go ahead and set versions. I can set the cloud provider. I can set the networking. I'm going to pick Canal because it's a little bit easier, I think. It's a little simpler. Um, and it'll come up quickly. But you can see all the different configuration options we have for the cluster itself. In a future video, I'm going to show you how to do it using a Helm chart and our continuous delivery tool called Fleet. Okay. One node, single pool. Oh, by the way, I noticed we could create multiple pools. So that's control plane, workers, you know, regions, availability zone, things like that. You have the ability to kind of create that uh, logical separation. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hit Create. And error. Oh, MSO one RSX because I was playing with this earlier. So let's go ahead and call it MSO. We'll call it demo. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit create. And now it's gonna go ahead and create that downstream cluster, or AKA the single node. And it usually takes about 15 to 35, 45 seconds for Rancher in the cloud. Mind you, Rancher in DigitalOcean to tell Harvester, which is in my closet over there, to go ahead and build the VM and start deploying. Boom. Now we have it deploying. Well, we can then uh, kind of highlight, and while this is loading, it usually takes about five to seven minutes, but I'm gonna use my AWS cluster just to kind of show you some of the highlights. Um, but let's show you real quick. We can, go to the, we can go to the demo cluster, we can go to the provisioning log, and we'll actually start seeing output, right? Because it's gotta build a VM, and it's gotta uh, connect in over SSH, it's gotta run a bunch of scripts to put RKE2 down as per the versions we've selected, and get it all checked into the cluster. So we'll come back to this in a second. But the advantage of being able to manage the cloud, uh, the downstream Kubernetes is I can do fun things like notice here, I've got a dev cluster with two worker nodes, right? So I've got one control plane and two workers. I can go ahead and scale up the pool. And what this is actually gonna do, notice now it's provisioning, my little highlight there, it's provisioning another EC2 instance and adding it into the cluster. If we wanted to look at an individual node, we can go edit and actually SSH into the node. So here, I've not SSH'd outside. I've not used any other tools. I've used my existing credentials given to me by Rancher, and I've SSH directly in the node. This is a great way to dramatically reduce surface area from a security standpoint of view. It's also a great way to give developers access to things that they may not necessarily need or have um, very easily, right, again, through RBAC. Okay, this one's on its way up. Other things we can do. If we wanted to get independent connection to the virtual machine, uh, one of the great things we can do is we can actually go down here and download an SSH key. So we talk a little bit about separation of duty. And 
for each of the machines, it creates a separate private and public key pair for, for each individual virtual machine. Great way to kind of reduce surface area from a vulnerability standpoint of view. Right? In other words, if I get a key compromise, only one of my virtual machines is going to be affected, not all of them. Kind of an interesting uh, additional security feature there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the provisioning logs. And we can see, there we go, waiting for Kublet to come up. And very shortly, we'll see it added to the cluster. This is kind of a cool uh, feature. Uh, let's see where we're at with our other cluster, with our demo cluster. We should be getting pretty close. Okay, it's waiting for it to come up. And let's go back to our AWS cluster. Meanwhile, the whole time, the cluster is available, right? So I can continue to do cluster operations. Notice it says node four. Okay, so there you go. Boom, now we're in the cluster and pretty soon, uh, there we go. There we go. start getting the plan and the nodes have correctly labeled. But notice, I've got 128.8, and I'll show you a fun upgrade in another video. Cool. Uh, let's go back to our let's go back to the cluster manager, and let's just see where demo is real quick. And we're 3.2 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and pause, and we'll be back in a minute when it's done. And we're back. Okay, cool. So that only took six minutes for the node to come up. We can look at the provisioning log, but the cool part is now I've got, go back to the cluster, all three clusters are up and running. I can go into my demo cluster. Again, I can SSH, actually SSH won't work because it doesn't use a tunnel, it connects directly. And because it's on my home network, uh, it's not gonna connect. But doesn't mean I still can't connect in from an app catalog standpoint of view. So again, I've got my single node, I can go ahead and use the app catalog, just like I normally would on any other cloud cluster. Uh, cool. I hope this was informative, kind of show you at least uh, kind of a fun feature about Rancher Multi-Cluster talking to Harvester as an infrastructure provider. If you have any other questions, please comment, like, subscribe, and share, and let us know how we can help. Have a good one.